Welcome back to Talking Markets. My name is Trevor. I'm here joined with Brian. Brian, how's it going today? What's going on, Trevor? It's been a it's been a good final stretch here of March, at least in terms of yeah. prices not uh, not yeah. There's some stability. Back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's kind of flat, a little boring, which is never the worst thing in the world after we've been on a tear for the majority of 2023. Yeah, yeah. So let's just highlight some some points. So. Uh, first things first, I just want to mention right now the market cap is just sitting right above one trillion. And yeah, like I said, it's just kind of you know a flat market right now. In the past seven days, Bitcoin hasn't really moved that much. Um, now, one thing I want to also just mention when it comes to USDC, you know, the DPEG happened on March 11th, and ever since that time, the market cap from USDC has still been in steady decline. And honestly, I kind of find this interesting considering that, you know, Circle said that, you know, everyone can issue one to one and that, you know, it is fully backed. But what's interesting is that you can see that the market still does not trust USDC, I'm thinking. And what's also interesting is that USDT, uh, the market cap of Tether in green, has been steadily increasing over time uh, as well. So I find this to be quite fascinating that most people are still putting all of their trust into USDT and looks like they're dropping it in USDC. Yeah, that's next a thing huge I also just for sure. Yeah, yeah, and uh, next thing I just want to mention is leading uh, Chinese banks support Hong Kong-based crypto firms. So I'm almost wondering if there's going to be another uh, China coin bull run here. If we're going to see, you know, part of the next bull run, if we're going to see a lot of Chinese coins in, in blockchain companies. Um, you know, increasing in market share over time, we might see that. Um, and then the last point I just want to mention is, so clear rules for crypto industry already exist, SEC Gary Gensler claims. So the SEC chairman claims the crypto industry is rife with non-compliance, and he's asking for another 200 million to chase bad actors. And yeah, what's kind of interesting is that he already believes that a lot of regulation already exists and that the rules are already clear for members, even though, you know, just recently CEO Brian Armstrong has been asking for more clarity. Other exchanges has been asking for more clarity. Even, you know, different crypto firms are trying to figure out if their crypto is a security or a commodity. And I think, you know, it seems like they're really trying to, you know, gain more money, actually, just to, you know, weed out bad, bad actors and also just see, you know, what's happening in the crypto industry and just to get more clarity. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Trevor. Uh, you know, I think especially with the, tr the tether thing you mentioned, I, I saw uh, recently that it, it, tether seems to continue to be uh, gaining at the expense of the other uh top at least the top four stable coins behind tether right. they're kind of bleeding in expense of tether and um, yeah yeah it seems like DAI is decreasing busd usdc yeah for sure and and usdt is going up it's interesting totally and we were talking right before the call about DAI. I'll, I'll jump into a little story we found about that in just a sec here uh, before we do let me go ahead and share my screen and just a quick look at the price returns over the past week we see one big outlier that was xrp um, and xrp has been getting a ton of uh, i guess what you would call bullish news at least for the xrp community because their confidence in the asset has increased uh following a a little bit of news regarding Increased speculation that the that the token will be classified as a commodity by the U.S. as opposed to a, a security. And commodity means uh, that there is uh, much less fear of of negative uh, monetary uh, consequences for the asset. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. So it seems like this is more of like a buy the rumor type of event, right? I think so. We too. don't have the clear the clear news on this just yet. It seems like. Yeah, it's all it's very similar to, you know, FOMC reports before the FOMC meeting actually happens. You know, if there's some news saying, oh, now Powell's leaning toward uh, interest rates getting cut, prices will go up. Now he's leaning towards it being of, of rising interest rates. Now prices go down. So it's kind of like 
everything is getting baked in the moment someone hears good news or bad news for XRP. And lately it's been a lot of, a lot of good news. And you can see here, uh, there's just been a lot of trading volume over the past 10 ish days or so, uh, mainly on three big Korean exchanges. It seems to be a big thing in Korea, even more than the U S right now. They're very bullish on XRP. Um, when you see this type of trading volume, it actually means that people are supporting the rise. If, if trading volume is going up as prices are going up, there's an increased probability of prices either maintaining their recent push or even continuing to rise above. So it got up, if I zoom in here to get more precise, it got up to about 57 and a half cents. Uh, if we see that price, uh, resistance level get eclipsed, then, you know, we're off to the races again. If you're an XRP trader, uh, if we start hearing some bad news all, all of a sudden, whether it's, you know, manipulated, well-timed bad news from people who want to sell from the powers that be, then all of a sudden you'll see that prices are going to fall. But, uh, just, just bear in mind that whenever you're in this kind of situation where, any big name can say, oh, the, good, the news is now good for the S SEC regarding XRP. Now it's bad. Like it, it's going to be very speculative uh, going forward. And the fundamentals mat matter a little bit less than usual. I, I wouldn't say they don't matter at all. You know, like, for example, the 30 day MVRV, 15% uh, is usually the danger zone, right? Around, yeah, about right here. So anything above right there, that means we're in kind of a danger zone for this red line representing the 30 day average trading returns, considering they're, they're at plus 23 and a half percent right now. Um, yeah, be a little worried that people have profited a bit too much and there may need to be a little bit of a cool down period. But again, it's very speculative at the moment. Uh, I could even look at social volume. And it does look like Social volume is modestly rising, but dominance especially, it's been getting almost 3% of all discussions among the top 100 assets in crypto right now. So clearly a lot of eyeballs are on it. Yeah, and I guess the worst case scenario would obviously be in the SEC declaring that it's a security. I think in that case, then it would be a blow probably for most other assets in the crypto oh, yeah. industry. Too. Absolutely. When a top 10 asset gets labeled as a security, it's usually not just that asset that gets impacted. So yeah, keep a close eye on that for sure. Uh, before we get into whales, as I promised, let's look at Dive for a moment. Uh, we picked up something here on our top transactions model. You can see this big black wide bar that represents the current day for all of these assets. You can see one inch with a $6 million transaction, Chili's 11 and a half, you get the idea. Well, this one's actually off the axis and that's because there was not one, not two, but 10 separate $200 million transactions that occurred on the DAI network, the fourth largest stable coin by market cap. You can see the price is completely fine. It did have that very strange dip down to about, I think, right around 90 cents or a little below 90 uh, on March 10th, so about three weeks ago. But you can see quite clearly, these are the largest transactions over the last month. And you had one big one on March 17th for $204 million. And then, wow, look at 10 straight $200 million uh, transactions that occurred within a few seconds of each other. And we're still trying to, to figure it out. It's certainly highly irregular. We went back into the historical uh, records and there aren't many cases where you just see repeated nine figure transactions happening on any stablecoin network. Now we do think there, it has something to do with some flash loans going on. You can see that there were two mints uh, that equated to $400 million in DAI and then they were burned just basically simultaneously. So, it, it, you know, the powers that be that, that hold all of the DAI and when new DAI gets brought into the ecosystem and when it gets brought out, they could have been doing something here. You can see multiple addresses were involved in this, uh, maybe five or six in total when I look through all the from and to addresses here. But we'll probably have more on this soon and we'll probably break, break some sort of story 
even if it's a whole lot of nothing. But, you know, when you have 2 billion, uh, if I have that right, 200 million times 10, $2 billion worth of a large stable coin moving around all at once, uh, it's, it's worth, it's worth uh, putting a magnifying glass to it for sure. Yeah, that's definitely interesting. Uh, also, these stable coins do seem to be going up overall in terms of the amount held in shark and whale addresses. Um, you know, Trevor mentioned that Tether was, was kind of gaining the most in terms of market cap. And the market caps are moving down a little bit for the other stable coins. But in terms of what's actually going into shark and whale wallets, you can see that USD coin has steadily been recovering ever since the huge panic that happened almost three weeks ago now on March 10th and 11th, really, I guess all the way up from the 8th to the 11th. Uh, but it's it's risen since quite rapidly. And since the 11th, we've seen these shark and whale addresses holding 100000 to $10 million in USDC. They've added almost 17% back to their stacks now. Uh, Tether, of course, is the big story here in red, way up at 39% of all Tether is now held by those 100K to $10 million addresses. Uh, BUSD also going up and DAI, you know, for whatever's going on with those those $2 billion worth of transactions, it's kind of just hanging steady for these uh, key shark and whale addresses. Bitcoin in green here, uh, still moving in a downtrend. So I, I'm I'm concerned about the upside of Bitcoin going to 30K and well beyond that, while the uh, owners of 10 to 10,000 10, Bitcoin continue to very mildly drop off. It's not the steep decline that we saw way back in October and November, but it's still a drop off. So we have to be a little weary of that. Last story I have, uh, and Trevor, we were talking about this before, SafeMoon, their server got hacked. Uh, a little over 24 hours ago. Not the biggest social volume spike in the world, but it's still enough to show that it's the top trending uh, asset in crypto right now. If we look at the top 10. Oops. It looks like about $8.9 million got drained or hacked. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's no chump change. It's a lot of money uh, for SafeMoon, which is... I believe I'm going to, I don't want to guess. I want to make sure I know what the market cap ranking is. Yeah, it's the 10, it's outside the top 1000 in terms of its market cap rank. So when you're talking about $8 million uh, getting hacked, that's a significant chunk of its overall market cap here. So you can see that it's still, you know, atop the, trending and it has been ever since the hack happened it's been number one here um unibright also as as we were talking about before the call uh, i guess it's a german asset uh if we look into it it looks like it's getting a lot of late social volume here um you know we might look into exactly what is is causing the minor uptick but I, in considering that it doesn't take a lot for an asset that's barely ever talked about to suddenly become trending you know not not worth going too much into it here. But yeah, always take a look at, at what the top 10 trending words are because they can enlighten uh, quite a bit on what's happening in the markets and what's pushing uh, prices up and down in the upcoming week before you uh, see Trevor and I talk about the markets once again. Yeah, definitely. So I think this was a good episode, nice and short. Um, yeah, and we'll have a call next week, right, Brian? Absolutely. Looking forward to next Thursday and uh, hope everyone stays safe. Uh, let's see if Bitcoin can inch toward 30K and uh, perhaps we can have a little nine month high. It hasn't been at above 30K since June of 2022. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see. So anyways, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, everyone. Talk soon.